Hello, Happy New Year everyone! Um, welcome back to Adamer's Tutorials. This week I wanted to show you how to decorate really cute little boxes. You can use these for uh, almost anything, uh, something like pins or even your headphone cords, sewing pins or needles or whatever you want to use it for. Now I have a bunch of different boxes here. Um, this one was actually a, a little wooden box like this which you can get in craft stores but you can also use a, an alto tin or in this case a Barclays uh, tin and I happen to have a bunch of these tins they open like that and these actually have had a really nice chocolate in it it's a chocolate with caffeine in it so um, I really find that one piece after uh, dinner is really quite nice it's really dark chocolate but that's beside the point. Um, we have a whole load of these because um, my husband ordered a whole box of them from Germany because you don't seem to get them here in shops. So we ordered it by uh, the gross. So I have a metric shit ton <laughs> of these little boxes. So I thought this might be a nice opportunity to do something with them. So if you want to know how to make these really cute sort of steampunky, collectory sort of um, boxes, then keep on watching. So for the project you will need some boxes of some kind, you will need some Mod Podge, um, a container and a brush, washi tape, paper, I'm using ordinary uh, brown wrapping paper here, one with uh, animals on it that we want to be cutting out, one plain brown one, um, I also have some black, but I haven't put it out yet. And you can also use fabric if you like, but it would be preferred then if you get the Mod Pot especially for fabric, but although this will work. What I forgot to mention is you may need a couple of tools, especially with the, uh, these Altoid tins, because we need to take the lid off. Um, also a pair of scissors might come in handy and some pens or pencils. What I'm going to do is look at these hinges and I'm going to bend them slightly open in order to get the lid off. So this one, uh, this metal one, I want to cover in paper and I'm going to start off with a brown paper. Cut a piece of paper a little bigger than the Alto tin is. Now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and for this one I'm using the matte Mod Podge. Putting this on a tray and start basting my Alto tin with that. I you feel that it's sort of covered and starting to get a little bit tacky. I blow on it a little bit and then I add the paper. And what you don't do really well now is rub over it and once you feel the top is nice and flush take your brush again and add a little bit of glue to the sides and fold up the sides and really rub that well as well what I do with the edges is this fold them in the corners fold it up Together. And then once we start folding this inward, you can open out that corner like so and fold it in like that. This is what the inside looks like, and this is what the outside looks like now. Now you want to let this dry for at least 20 minutes and then we can add a layer of Mod Podge to the top to uh, seal off this paper. So what we can do is carry on with uh, the bottom at the, for the moment. And you can either use the same um, paper or you can use different paper. I think I'm going to use this black paper I have here. Make it a bit wider than you think you'll need. Base the sides with the Mod Podge. 
And you can always cut off the excess with a knife. Adding a little bit more Mod Podge. And you do want a little bit of overlap, but not this much, obviously. And now once that's all nice and dry, I'm gonna cut a get a knife and cut all around the edges. I'm gonna now add a layer of Mod Podge on top. This is gonna be the first layer because we're gonna add decoration on top that we're also gonna seal in like this. So use a scalpel to cleanly cut along the edge like this. If there's any edges you see are loose, you can add a little bit of the Mod Podge in between and make sure they're stuck down. You can do two things with the bottom. You can either fold this in, much parts it down, and maybe put a, uh, another on the bottom, or you can cut it off like we did on the top. I think I'm just gonna much parch this to the bottom, fold it like this. For the lid, you also wanna make a hole there where the lid sits, if you haven't kept it open. I'm just using the knife again. I'm gonna take <clears throat> this paper that has all the cute little butterflies and stuff on it and I'm gonna stick a couple of them down. Even though these are placed like that on the paper, I'm gonna be cutting, cutting them loose and sort of place them like collector's items, like I did here. Um, because I think it is a bit more in keeping with the style. So what you want to do is neatly cut these out because we used a similar color underneath. I'm not too worried about it, like leaving a little bit of the brown paper, but if you use the contrasting color, you really have to be quite neat. And once you've got those out, add a thin layer of Mod Podge to the top of your lid. Place your butterflies. Or whatever you're adding. Stick them down. A thin layer of Mod Podge on top and this and one more layer is going to be the two final layers of this box. Again allowing for 20 minutes drying time in between. I'm also going to take the, the bottom of this box Give that a layer. So in total you want about two to three layers on top of all of these surfaces. So for these wooden boxes I'm going to show you a different technique using using washi tape. Now as you can see this is see-through so if you want a different look and feel you will need to paint your, um, your box first. So I stained this little box blue. I'm going to use the washi tape to cover it. So I'm placing this for a little bit of skew. Just making sure that the top looks nice, different butterflies on it and beetles. going to curve it nicely around the edges. Take a narrower washi tape and you can use that for the edge because that's almost the right size. Great thing about washi tape is you can just pull it back up again if you're not happy with the result. And since this is nice and wide washi tape I'm just going to use it on the sides as well. To finish off I'm going to Add a layer of Mod Podge. Now it's your, up to your, you if you want to use gloss or or matte. I think I'll end up adding two or three layers of Mod Podge. But do make sure that you leave enough drying time in between the layers. Otherwise it will start puckering a little bit. The last method I want to show you is these little round tins. And I'm going to cover this with fabric instead of paper. Now I have this sort of steampunky looking fabric here as well, <clears throat> so I'm going to 
pick out an area that I like, what you do want to do is take a pencil and mark around the tin. Then make sure you have enough to also go over the edge and back down again. So you're gonna cut a circle that is a lot wider than I just marked out. Just to remind myself where it was again. <laughs> oh good, you can sort of see the pattern on the, uh, on the other side. So I'm gonna make use of that. And draw my circle on the back of it instead. Okay, we're now going to deliberately cover the top of this tin in my Podge. And add the fabric to it. This will give you really gross hands because the Mod Podge will come through the fabric. And you will need to spread it out in order to get it to stick nicely. And stretch it along the edges. Here's one I did before. Um, because these tins don't really close if you don't like, if you cover the edges, I had to, I was forced to cut it off at that line. So that is what it looks like. Um, one of them. So turn over your lid and apply some mud podge to the side. And now comes the really stretching and adjusting part because you want to try and fold the fabric with the least amount of wrinkles. And this is a bit tricky, I must admit. And if you want to, you can fold the fabric inwards. Not sticking it down, but just to keep it out of the way. And if you feel like it's not staying there, you can always add a couple of clothespins to the edge and let it dry like that. And once this is all nicely folded over, turn it over and you can add a layer of Mod Podge to the top. That will also help dry it in shape, so you may want to add this a little bit sooner than with the paper. Once your first layer of Mod Podge on your fabric lid has dried, you can cut off the excess that we folded inside. I ended up adding a bit of lace around the edges of these uh, um, of these fabrics boxes. Uh, one, because it looked pretty, and two, to keep the edges in place. So I think that looks really cute. Once that's completely dry, um, that's going to be quite nice, I think. Um, also, you will have to put the Eltoy tin back together after it's uh, completely dried. So I'm just going to give these boxes their time to dry now. So I have now put them all back together and this is what they look like. Um, these are the fabric ones. Um, I think they're quite cute the way they are. If you want you can also do the bottom of obviously but you have to be careful because otherwise it doesn't close anymore. But I think even with just the white sides they look quite nice. Um, this is what the wooden boxes, boxes look like. And here's a little Altoid tin. Really hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to decorate uh, wooden or um, tin boxes uh, to look sort of steampunky, sort of collectory. I think especially this one looks very much like that. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Pinterest. And I really hope you have a good week. Bye everyone.